We've seen a ton of magic being taught at Hexide School of Magic and Demonics, but where's the demonology at? No offense to substitute Professor King over here, but I think we could all use a crash course on the demons we've met so far. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and this is your definitive demonology guide for the Owl House Season 1. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Devin Elliott, for supporting us on Patreon. This is your spoiler warning! If you haven't caught up on the first season of TOH, hit pause on this video and come back when you've captured the Snaggleback. Prepare yourself for... Demons 101! Demons, grim tricksters of twilight, creatures of sulfur and bone, babies with cute little paws. According to King, demons only exist to sow chaos and misery. Their only weaknesses are purified water and passive-aggressive comments sometimes. All demonology books are sorted via the demon decimal system, so without further ado, let's dive in. Number 1. Adagast Adagast is a giant blobular puppeteer demon with the ability to use his skills in puppetry to make his victims believe the lies he weaves to ensnare them. Apparently, each of his tentacles can hold a puppet, giving him lots of options for characters in his little performance. In the episode Witches Before Wizards, Adagast tricks Luz into believing that he's a wizard and that he's selected her as the chosen one of the Boiling Isles. He sends her on a secret mission that Luz happily accepts, wanting to believe that she'll actually fit in on the Boiling Isles, unlike how she feels at home. Unfortunately, his puppet show leads Luz straight down a path to her demise. Luckily, Ida shrinks and eats Adagast before he can kill Luz. But dang, this guy is tricky. He doesn't even need illusionist magic to make people see a world that isn't there. Number 2. Kikimora Kikimora is Emperor Bellus's personal assistant, and one of the few demons we've seen exhibit magical powers so far in the series. She delights in serving the Emperor, and is inarguably one of his most loyal, trusted allies. According to Russian folklore, Kikimora was a sinister female house demon, and one of the first recorded explanations for sleep paralysis. Kikimora is an expert on Boiling Isle's history, specifically Bellus's rise to power during the Savage Ages. Although she's tiny and quiet, her anger and disappointment is palpable to those who don't follow Bellows' orders to a T, and she has very low tolerance for failure. Her character design is one of the coolest of the series. Instead of hair, she has two hands resting on her head in the shape of a ponytail with bangs. She also walks around barefoot, a bold move for a high-ranking member of the Emperor's Coven, and her little feet are shaped like bird talons. Number 3. Tybalt Tibbly, Grimhammer III, aka Tibbles. For a guy with a long name, Tibbles is pretty tiny for a pig. Initially, Tibbles is a salesman at the night market, peddling potions and other sundries to desperate customers. He's crafty, tricky, and apparently super good at Hex's Hold'em. He almost manages to defeat Ida and enslave King, but luckily, Luz, Willow, and Gus accidentally crush his stand with the mobile Owl House during their Moonlight Conjuring. Because of this, Tibbles vows to get revenge on Ida, threatening to turn her into the Emperor for a reward. He manages to open up a carnival rather quickly in the aftermath of his stand's destruction. Once again, he bamboozles the gang by convincing King to shrink his friends. He then forces them to engage in battle with teeny dangerous animals in his Circus of Tiny Terrors. Luz and Co. defeat him a second time, but I'm pretty sure that that's not the last we'll see of him. Number 4. Bat Queen and Baby Bats The Bat Queen is a large palisman who once belonged to a giant before she was abandoned and forced to forge a life on her own. Thousands of years later, she can no longer remember her former creator, but still remembers the hurt of being discarded. She serves as protector of all damaged and unwanted palismen, guarding them from harm as she does her own children. Ida is one of the only people the Bat Queen trusts, and leaves her children with her to babysit. How her first child was conceived is a mystery, but her second and third were born via regurgitation by their older siblings. Although she's a palisman, the Bat Queen is also technically a demon, and the wealthiest on the Boiling Isles at that. I'm personally of the opinion that she gets her money from the wayward witches, demons, and palismen that fail her trials. Number 5. The Carnival Demon, aka the Fun Police The Fun Police Clown is the head of Carnival Security. He's also apparently a Carnival Demon, and although I don't know exactly what powers he has, he seems like your average carny to me. Instead of turning Ida into the Emperor's Coven for a reward, he has her work handing out candy crab apples to his guests to make up for her setting up shop on his turf. Number 6. King once the King of Demons, King is now basically a sidekick and house pet to Ida and Luz. Long ago, before his crown was stolen, he allegedly ruled over all the demons in the realm. He's still used to acting like a king, and often bosses his subjects, aka random animated items, creatures, or witches around like he's in charge. He's an expert in demonology, although sometimes he gets the facts wrong. 
Because of his small size, he's often babied by people who think he's adorable. And this only reminds him that he's far away from reclaiming the throne and returning to power. But like any good puppy or kitty, King is always down for a nap and some snacks. We have tons of theories about King's origins, former identity as the King of Demons, and more, so be sure to check out our other Owl House videos to hear more about King. Number 7. Hootie It's time to talk about Hootie Hoot Hoot! Whether you love him or think he's annoying, Hootie is absolutely one of the most interesting demons on the Isles. He acts as guardian and protector of the Owl House, normally doing things like announcing visitors. However, it turns out that Hootie is a fierce warrior who can totally throw down. He takes out an entire squadron of Bellos' soldiers in battle, filling the fight with humor and absurdity like only Hootie can deliver. I know he can be gross and intrusive, but I think we're going to see a lot more complexities from Hootie's character as the series develops. Number 8. Warden Wrath Wrath is the warden at the Conformatorium, the magical prison where those who oppose the Emperor's rulings are jailed. His appearance is definitely alarming. You can barely see his eyes, and his entire face is just a giant mouthful of sharp teeth. The Warden is extremely short-tempered, and has little tolerance for abnormalities of any kind. But he's not totally heartless. He obviously has a crush on Ida, so we know he's capable of some form of compassion. Wrath has three main powers. Super Strength, Fire Breath, and the ability to morph his appendages into weapons. Number 9. Braxis like Warden Wrath, Braxis is a child demon whose face is mostly made of teeth. He also has a crazy deep voice for a demon still in the baby class. Number 10. Giraffes Giraffes were banned from the Boiling Isles years ago just for being total weirdos. I'm not sure what giraffes did exactly to be labeled too freaky for the demon realm, but I guess it's our problem now. We know that giraffes are definitely demons, not monsters or animals, because King includes them in his Demonology 101 lecture. Number 11. The Snaggleback The Snaggleback is the most powerful, fearsome demon on the Boiling Isles. At least, King thinks he is, until he and Luz catch the Snaggleback hiding out in the Owl House during the Boiling Rainstorm. Although King believed that this little dude wandered around in the Boiling Rain because he's tough as nails, it turns out that he's just a nice guy looking for shelter. Unfortunately, the Owl Beast immediately chomps down on him like an hors d'oeuvre, but don't worry, as soon as she recovers, she barfs him back up. He's missing a tail, but at least he's still alive! For ground fright, Principal Bump insists on stringing him up like a disco ball to spruce up the dance floor. Number 12. Smoochie Pie the Sweetie Baby Second only in alleged terror to the Snaggleback is Smoochie Pie, a fish-like demon with chicken legs that King claims is ultra-terrifying. King swears that he's more threatening than his name implies, but after the Snaggleback turned out to be a softie, I'm not sure that I trust that SP is all that dangerous. I know that there are tons more demons in the background of King's Lesson, but because we don't know their names yet, I'm leaving them off my list for now. But let me know in the comment section if there are any that I missed. Like and subscribe to Nerdwire, and stay tuned for more Owl House Deep Dives.